Hi everybody, I hope you're having a nice weekend. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Come what may, we're going to pray. Come what may, we're going to praise our Lord. All praise to the Lord Most High. All praise to the one who saved my life. All praise to Jesus Christ, High King of Heaven, my King forever. I um I pulled out Streams in the Desert today, and I don't read this every single day, but today I opened it up and it blessed me. So this is for October 27th, Streams in the Desert. And the Psalm is Psalm 27, Psalm 42, verse seven. All thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. And then it's, it's a beautiful um, hymn or poem that I'm gonna read. They are his billows, whether they go o'er us, hiding his face and smothering spray and foam or smooth and sparkling spread a path before us to our haven, bear us safely home. They are his billows, whether for our succor, which is like chastisement, he walks across them, stilling all our fears, or to our cry there comes no aid nor answer, and in the lonely silence none is near. They are his billows, whither we are toiling through tempest-driven waves that never cease, while deep to deep with clamor loud is calling, or at his word they hush themselves in peace. They are his billows, whether he divides them, making us walk dry shod where seas had flowed, or lets tumultuous breakers surge about us, rushing unchecked across our only road. They are his billows, and he brings us through them. So he has promised, so his love will do, keeping and leading, guiding and upholding. To his sure harbor, he will bring us through. Annie Johnson Flint wrote that. And here's the devotion. Stand up in the place where the dear Lord has put you and there do your best. God gives us trial tests. He puts life before us as an antagonist face to face out of the buffeting of a serious conflict. We are expected to grow strong. I love this. The tree that grows where tempest toss its bows and bend its trunk often almost to breaking is often more firmly rooted than the tree which grows in the sequestered valley where no storm ever brings stress or strain. The same is true of life. The grandest character is grown in hardship. Praise the Lord. And so I just wanted to encourage you today, if you're going through a storm and you just feel beat up, like the waves are just hitting you over and over again and you're barely gasping for air and you're exhausted and you're just saying, Lord, please help me as you gulp more water and as the wind is slapping your face and the waves are slapping your face, so to speak, hold fast. The Lord our God is near. The Lord our God is near the Lord our God is here. Jesus is with you. Jesus is with me. He holds us fast. He strengthens us and he will never leave us nor forsake us. We know that and his promises are sure. He is the yes and the amen. And so Isaac's here as you probably heard him in the background. And so um, I'm not sure how long this will be, but if I stop abruptly, it's because Isaac needed my attention. So let's pray. Father in heaven, I just adore you, God. I thank you for being so close. You truly, Jesus, are the friend that sticks closer than a brother. You truly, Jesus, are our Savior, our living hope. As I was reading in Titus, we are your slaves. You are our master. You are our God. We say, Master, what would you have us to do today? We say, Lord God Almighty, you are the Lord of the heavenly armies, the Lord of hosts, the head above all, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever, Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end, first and the last, the great I am. You are Hashem, the name above all names. You are Shalom, Jesus Christ, our perfect peace, the Prince of Peace, the one like in that devotion who calms and stills the waves. Even in death, even when we watch a loved one die, even when we watch someone suffer, there will be an end to death. There will be an end to suffering. It will not go on forever. Lord God Almighty, thank you for fighting our battles. Thank you that your sword is poised and posed to strike the enemy with a severe death blow. At Calvary's cross, 
You crushed the serpent's head. Hallelujah, Jesus. You cannot have our family in the name of Jesus. You cannot have these godly Christian marriages in the name of Jesus. You cannot have the legacy as we pass the baton of faith to our children and grandchildren in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood over our homes. Holy Spirit, would you breathe on our homes, breathe on our hearts. May we be the temple of the living God. Jesus, you are in us. Thank you, God Almighty, for gifting us with the Holy Spirit. So we don't have to walk about not knowing what we should do. We have a sure foundation. You are our rock, our fortress, our, our shield, our exceedingly great reward, our high priest and intercessor, Lord. You are the ancient of days. You are the just judge. You are good and greatly to be praised. So shall we be saved from our enemy. Thank you for saving us from all of our enemies, the enemies of the mind, the enemy of our own heart, the enemy of the flesh, the world, the devil, all of them. You shield us and protect us from all of them. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, forgive us of our sins for they are many. Cleanse us and wash us, Lord. We know like it says in 1 John, if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Al Roy, you're the God who sees and you see our sins. Even if we don't say an ugly word out loud, we might think it and that's a sin. We might not kill someone with a sword or with a gun, but we might hate them in our heart and you said that is a sin. We might not lust and act out, but we might think an impure thought and that is a sin. We fall short daily like your word says there is none who does good no not one forgive us of our many sins god especially pride pride goes before a fall lord keep us humble keep us humble at your feet jesus at your feet we bow at your feet we adore you at your feet we get cleansing at your feet we surrender all at your feet we say come let us worship and bow down let us kneel in humble adoration before the Lord our God, our maker, for he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand, just the sheep of his hand. O oh Lord, thank you, like it says in the Psalms, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you would consider him for you've made him, you've made her a little lower than the angel sword. Oh God, we are so unworthy. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the resurrection of, from the dead, that the tomb is empty. Thank you that by your stripes we're healed. Thank you that you, Jesus, became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. Thank you that you took all of our sin debt, every single thing that we did, everything that we did in the past, our present daily sin that we are so sorry about, and the sin of the future. You took it all upon your broad shoulders and you allowed yourself to be pierced your hands, your feet, your brow, your side, and by your stripes on your back were healed. Thank you, thank you, thank you, God, for the promise and for becoming the Lamb of God, for bleeding and dying and being spit upon and scourged, and you did it for us, God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we give you thanks, Lord. Thank you for our homes, for our families, for daily bread, for sustenance, God, for a warm cup of tea or coffee, for food in our pantries and clothes on our back, for a warm sweater or blanket when we're cold, for a pillow, for a bed, God. Thank you for our children, Lord, our beautiful kids that you've blessed us with, God. And some of us, some of us praying together have grandkids and great grandchildren, Lord. Thank you for all of the children represented here. Thank you for our moms and grandparents and praying grandparents that prayed for us even before we were born. Thank you for that. Thank you, Jesus, for our spouses, Lord. We pray your blessing over them, that you would give them strength and endurance. I pray a special blessing over my husband as he's sharing a devotion tomorrow, God. I pray for all the husbands represented here. It is very difficult to be a godly man in this generation, but your word says to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things will be added. So Lord, please help the men that we know and love, married and unmarried, widowed or uh, divorced or single or, or young, whatever. We pray for the men, the young men, even the infants, even the small little guys. I think of uh, Jude, um, Jade and Reuben's little baby boy. I lift him up to you, God. I pray for all the boys and young men and men and elderly men represented here that they would walk like Joshua and Caleb strong, that they would be strong like leaders, God, seeking you 
serving you, worshiping you in spirit and in truth. I want to pray for the pastors that are represented here. Some people attend Calvary, Pomona Valley, Chino Valley, Chino Hills, um, Utah churches, Idaho, churches in Colorado, in Texas, Father, all over the world. I pray for our pastors, God, that they would be reverent, that they would worship you, that they would not follow after sin, that they would repent, that you would bless them with friends that they could be accountable to, bless them with wives that they could pour their hearts out to, bless them with an elder board and leaders that would surround them and they could talk about ideas and bear each other's burdens, God. And I pray for our pastors that they would teach the full counsel of God. We pray for the peace of Israel, Lord. May peace be within our walls. We pray against these evil, evil, demonic, satanic attacks of Hamas. Would you stop them? Would you mute them? Would you make their bullets like rubber bullets that they wouldn't even penetrate, God? Would you make their tanks like Tonka trucks, like little tiny toy uh engines that they wouldn't even work god and the plans that the enemy intended for evil would you holy spirit would you father and jesus christ the righteous one turn it around for good lord we know that you said in the last days there'd be wars and rumors of wars but we also know that there's many in israel that don't know you jesus as the true messiah so we pray for israel god and we pray for america our beloved country that is so messed up and divided and full of sin and decaying to the core lord please please god bring revival fire bring the gift of repentance to homes to homeless shelters to plant parenthood to hospital bedrooms to cars to prisons to lion tamers ministry to uh people that might have addictions to porn to um meetings between uh, pastors and elders and counselors and therapy rooms and coffee shops bring revival bring repentance god we want to see it we need to see it we pray for the loved ones in our lives that are lost they're into drugs and alcohol and porn and partying the world series is going on they love uh sports more than the living god they love the flesh and the world and the delicacies of this world more than knowing you and it breaks our hearts god it breaks her hearts because you're the one that makes their heart beat not baseball not basketball not hockey you jesus your blood is what saves us the world can't save us sports money entertainment a spouse a loved one a girlfriend a boyfriend a homosexual relationship it will never fulfill us you're the only one king jesus that fulfills us you're the only one king jesus that satisfies us god you satisfy us lord you are the joy of our hearts god and we look at the people in the world and we do weep because we don't want to see them die in their sins god one of my clients husband ex-husbands very ill and he will be going to city of hope soon this man is so depraved and did so many horrific things to my client and i still don't want him to die in his sins we pray for our enemies god that they would be saved i pray for that man you know his name you know his name i pray for my friend who whose mom just went home to be with you jesus she was a godly woman and she's grieving and mourning bless my friend Bless my other friend who lost a loved one by suicide and she's grieving. Your word says, blessed are those who mourn for those they shall be comforted. Comfort the David and Munihan family. Comfort them. Be with Cameron when he goes out on the streets as a police officer. Be with all our first responders and military, Lord. Be with Sam Regay. Be with all of the military. Every single person, Lord. Be with our president, I pray for his salvation. I pray for the new president, that you would put a godly person in office, a godly man, Jesus, that you would not allow someone in office that agrees with killing babies, Lord, please. I pray for family disagreements and reconciliation. I pray for those that have been touched by victimization. You know what I'm talking about, Lord. You know exactly the situation I'm talking about. Touch that young lady's heart and comfort her, Lord. Comfort her, Jesus. Wrap your giant Abba arms around her. I pray for those battling cancer. I thank you that Audrey's almost done. Bless her and keep her. Shine your face upon her. Heal her from her head to her feet, God. No more chemo. No more radiation. No more. No more cancer. 
heal her from 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 the beginning to the end lord you are my beautiful sister audrey's god you are her rock you are her healer lord comfort the kruger family lord jesus thank you so much for my beautiful daughter olivia and her friends that came to visit us thank you that isaac was had good behaviors that day i pray for more good behaviors for my son i pray for all the special needs community lord for those that are three and four and nonverbal, all the way up to those that are in their 20s or 30s or living in a home independently. I pray for them, God. It is a tough road. It's a tough journey. Comfort them, Jesus, in your name. Amen. God bless you guys.